Hello. Hello and welcome. It's the chat. My name is Manny Onumonu. If there's anybody that knows the airways even better than the birds, it will be my guest on the program this week. Dr. Harold Olushagun Demure, an aeronautical engineer and one-time director general of the Nigeria Civil Aviation Authority, NCAA. Demure was born in Ijebode, Ogun State, on May 31, 1945. He attended Ijebode Grammar School, where he obtained Cambridge High School Certificate, HSC, and General Certificate of Insurrection, TC Advanced Level, in 1964. And in 1965, he won a Soviet Union government scholarship to study aeronautical engineering in the former USSR. Harold proceeded to Kiev Institute of Aviation Engineers, Kiev, where he obtained Masters of Science in Aeronautical Engineering, and then to Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, USA, for his Doctorate of Science, DSC in Aircraft Gas Turbine and Jet Propulsion Engines in 1975. Harold was recruited from the United States in 1976 to join the Federal Ministry of Aviation, Nigeria, as Senior Airworthiness Surveyor, rising to become Assistant Director, Airworthiness, in June 1989. Upon the creation of the defunct Federal Civil Aviation Authority in 1990, he was appointed Deputy Director, Air, Transport, Economic Regulations and Licensing. He rose to become the director, safety services in 1991. After retiring in 1995, Demure worked as an aviation consultant. He later formed Afrijet Airlines in 1998. Afrijet Airlines became one of the biggest cargo airlines in the country by 2005, servicing various cargo destinations on the continent. To address the crisis rocking the sector, Harold was appointed by former President Ulusha Gobasanjo as a Director General of the Nigerian Aviation Authority in 2005, following the fatal air disasters in a span of seven weeks, which left the nation mourning. Dr. Harold Demore has been married since 1973 to Osa Reti Afusat Demore, the first female director of Central Bank of Nigeria. The union has been very fruitful. He is the founder of Evergreen Apple Nigeria, the first fully integrated fixed base operations and maintenance facility hangar in Nigeria. Dr. Harold Delure, it's so good to see you again. Good morning, morning. I was I was just saying the, the last time I saw you was in Abuja. Right. Now we're in Lagos. <laughs> you know, sitting together yeah. face to face as a retired, you know, public officer. Right. But it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean you're retired from work, is it? <laughs> continues. Well, continues. Let, let, let's even go back to your early days. You know, first you had education in in, in Russia. No, but here in Nigeria first. In Nigeria, I went to. Uh, in the primary school I went, it's called Christ Church Polugun School. It's, a, it's an Anglican primary school. Mm -hmm. And then it's attached to Jebode Grammar School. I also went to Jebode Grammar School for my secondary education. I stayed over to, to do my A-levels. And when I finished the HSC, then I got a scholarship from the Federal Ministry of, Ibish, Ministry of Education, External Bureau. Yeah. And I went to Soviet Union to study chemical engineering. First of all, why the choice of aeronautical engineering? Well, you did you play with a lot of toys in no, your... That, that, you during know. our time, there was Yuri Gagarin that went to space. Yes, It was I inspiration that, for yes. young people. So from that time, I've been trying to find... I was very good in math and physics in any way. So that was, was good in engineering. But which engineering was going to be? Is that what your parents wanted you to be no, at that time? My father wanted to be a lawyer. Oh, yeah, but I, I was very bad in, in Latin. <laughs> I was getting zero in Latin, getting all the in physics. Yeah. So, so the major problem in the family, what's happened with Yegu? But uh, I remember Bishop Kale then, a cousin to my yes. 
to my father I said no 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 allow him he's doing very well in physics that's very good so i then studied physics and i mean i then decided i would do electrical engineering what did you take up as the first job when you came in i came as i went straight to minister of aviation i was an airworthiness uh, uh severe they call it and i mean airworthiness severe if i call them airworthiness inspectors now and then i started and my first job was on on dc10 which nigeria was, was buying then in Long Beach, California. So we had to go with them and then that's how it started. That's how we started there. And you spent 40 years or more yeah, yeah, yeah. in yeah, yeah. the aviation industry. Uh, for my life, uh, more than 40 years now I've been in aviation. That's what I, From 1965, when I left Nigeria, till 2013, I finally now uh, stopped working uh, for government. Hmm. And now also, and because of that time, I also serve on the board of the, of the Flight Safety Foundation, which is the foremost for aviation safety in the world. So we continue. Latest technology. How can we improve aviation? What are we doing next? What is wrong? You know. Yeah, well, the, I mean, you rose up to the uh, post of the Director General of the FCAA. <laughs> uh, that's the Federal <laughs> Civil Aviation Authority. NCAA. NCAA, right. I rose up to become the... Director of Safety yes. in the F FCAA, which is called FCAA, the yes. Director of Safety. Then 1965, we were retired. All of us were fired. We, we call it Thursday morning massacre. <laughs> <laughs> and we were fired. Hey, tell me about it. What happened? The, well, we, uh, there was an accident then. The accident was about, uh, occurred to an airline. I think it was Hacker, lost a lot of people. And then uh, I granted the airline. I shut down the airline. The minister was not happy that I did that. So I was there. He said, but we didn't inform him. And I said, no, I, I, he said, we didn't take permission from before we shut down the airline. He said, well, I don't need to take permission. I don't need to inform you that I've done it. And uh, it didn't go well with him. I was going to say, after then, there were two air accidents coming yeah. after, one after the other. Yes. Weren't yes. they? And at that time, you had left. I bled. I was So you, and, you had to be recalled. Airline. Yes, yes, yes. I was recalled then. I, was, I remember so so vet was Bellevue. So Soliso and, and Bellevue. And Bellevue, a lot yes. of loss of uh, life. So it was very sad indeed. And then uh, they then started a committee. Uh, we're already doing well in private sector. We're already doing our stuff. We're no longer interested in government. But the government said, you come back. So we came back. How did you feel when you were asked to return? I felt that, first of all, there was a dilemma for about two weeks. Did you me. feel indispensable? Not really. But I just thought that I didn't want to work for government again. You know? You know, when we were in town in 1965, I told my, my children were already studying in America. And I said, uh, I've been, uh, I've been, uh, uh, You couldn't fired. use fired. I, I, the word I knew was fired. You used fired. I said, we have been fired. And they said, were, there were small children. They said, we are fired. <laughs> they are the fire people. And I said, yes, you know, they don't want to have been fired. And then it was all agreed among us. Said, Nobody will work for government. We'll do private work. Oh, really? Yeah, I want it. So, so when so in our time, you discourage you your children from working oh, yeah, yeah. for and, government? And, and right now, none of them is working for government. They're all in the private sector. Yes, yes. Only my wife, my step work for government. And then, uh, all the rest work, are working in the private sector. It's very interesting. So when you returned, um, what did you have to do to, you know... Aviation? Yes. Ah, well, to stop. Well, we, we... First of all, we... To be honest with you, when I came into NCA, the first thing I noticed was, and this is not right, this is not a nice thing to say. I told them that I noticed, we checked what was going on, that there was no longer enough knowledge in the system. There was no longer enough knowledge. The main part of the time, many people had been sacked from airline, from vision, from here and there. The people left, no longer enough knowledge. So what, I, what we did was, we looked back in the industry, brought in some retired people who have left, who are very good. We brought them in to come and assist. And we did that immediately. But what about training and infrastructure? Oh, massive training. I did the, that was the, that's what I was known, known for, trial. Massive training program. I've got air from uh, World Bank, got air from Flight City Foundation. We got air from American FAA. IK was very, very, you know, extremely very good to us. That. When I was growing up here you know, in Nigeria, we used to have a Nigeria Airways. Oh, yeah. And uh, suddenly it's gone completely out very, of... Very sad that we lost Nigerian Airways. Nigerian government spent a lot of money on aviation. Who are you pointing fingers at now? I think all of us must take the blame. The government, 
they have too much public, in, they have too, too much interference. Look, Nigeria has had 10 managing directors in 10 years. No, no, no company runs that way. You don't run any business that way. 10 managing directors in 10 years. How can you, how can you operate that way? Everybody has down policy, doing whatever they like. So that was all very good. Then the people inside, the Nigerians also, who are not, we are not so much as petroleum as we should have been. Ethiopian Airlines and African Airlines, they make a lot of money. So yeah. what, what do they do differently then? They, they do it right. They do it right. They're very serious. When we had a military government in, uh, in Ethiopia, they didn't touch the, the MD of their airline. It stayed. The captain stayed to I was the MD. Ethiopian airline was what NPC, NMPC is to Nigeria. The general of the foreign exchange. If I tell you this, you blow your mind. Do you know the biggest amount of revenue that Ethiopian airlines make? They make from Nigeria. They ticket Nigerians buy. How is that? So, you know, I mean, when I was DJNC, air transportation was my bread and butter. So we check every airline where they make their money and everything. They made a hub in Addis, bring everybody across and they spread about the world. And they were doing very well. They brought Dreamliner. Triple seven. They bought the max now, the latest ever plane, and they maintain them. They have maintenance facility, training facility, flight crew training, cabin crew, they have everything in house so they can consolidate the money they make and do it. If you, you, as them. you're looking at the aviation industry in Nigeria now, are you happy with the way the airports are? Well, listen, it, there have been a gigantic step to improve the airport. A lot of money has been spent. But it's not the amount of money you spend, it's how you spend it. You have to make sure you meet, it meets your something. Abuja has just been open. Now nah, it's better. It's looking good. They even joined, which was very good thing the government did. They have the train right from the center to the airport. Very good. We are going to enjoy this in future, no question. It's very good. Lagos, well, they have been the road from Oshodi to the airport right now to try to improve things. Uh, but, but we want to make Nigeria a home where people can transit. Right now, if you buy a ticket from all over the world, you say you are going to Nigeria, people are afraid. Why? They believe once you come out, we don't have a transit lounge. You know when you go to Dubai, you get to that transit lounge, you can buy, you can move around, you can stay, you can rest. You never see a policeman there. You don't see a military person there. What, one other thing I also noticed is that Nigerians coming in you know, from uh, from abroad, always lined up for long in the queues while foreigners just walked in. Yeah, you know, you know, those, those are the bad mannerisms that we have, and those are the things that fans need to to readdress. When we had, you remember the case when we had the unfortunate uh, incident in December, called the Christmas uh, attempted the uh, underpant bomber. Yeah, we, we had that uh, in Lagos here. Uh, at that time, you know, we have the, the various security machines. At that time, we call it the, it was a metal detector. It could not detect explosive. So the guy passed through it and that's what happened. After that, we made a lot, I made a lot of directives. You know, at that time, I found that, you know, working together, you can achieve a lot. Air Force, immigration, customs, uh, narcotics, fan, all of us. Who are what we find and they work together. Our CCTV footage showed everything we saw him. Really? Oh, yeah, all that for that. So there was fast supply. Listen, you may blame Fan, you may break Nigeria vision. We were on top that day. That was safe, Nigeria. You know, Nigeria was placed on the country of interest watching of the United States. After we showed her, our name was removed. <laughs> it was good for Nigeria. I, that was one thing, if you ask me, one of the greatest things, that was one of the things we did. So it's very good. And we work together. MD fan, all of us, immigration, custom, everything. It was so what, what, well, tell me something, Dr. Demery. What can we do to get back our national airline? Do you think there should be more involvement of uh, the private sector? I think it should now be PPP, public, private participation. I think we should do it together. And I think we can lead the federal government, we go to Abland, go to a lot of things to do. That's what we should do. And then we can have private sector to get in. But the important thing is this, we must stop political interference in the running of aviation. We, unless we stop it, 
you can form another airline 20 times going to go around the drain. I can see because I'm maybe I'm the speaker of the house or I'm sending the press there. Employ my sister who had just finished university. Employ in Nigeria without making me that making director of Lega. She had just finished law school. She doesn't even know like a feeding board lawyer. She doesn't know anything. Why are we doing that? If you stay employed, we can understand. You decide what position they must give the person and rent the place. All such interferences must stop. Here we are at this point, Dr. Demure. You have to pick a question. Wow. Whichever question you pick from this box, you have to answer it. Gee. I'll be I'm trying to. What are you trying to do here? Oh, we're just, okay. uh, we're just playing close games. My eyes and uh, take one. You don't have to shut your <laughs> eyes. And this is fair, wow. free, and credible. Can you read out your question? What are your thoughts on the conduct? of the just concluded 2019 election oh. and the representation of women, youth, and disabled persons. Wow. wow. I, you know, I'm not a politician. <laughs> uh, cast That's po but there's politics in you. Yes, OK. Um, let, let me say this, uh, honestly, that, and that's, what I, that's how I feel. Um, when I look at the result generally, and even the, the result of the governorship now, I can see a trend. I see a trend. You are, people are winning heavy where they are very strong, or where you can see even, well, I won't say it's acting correlation, but uh, from your area of origin, from your area where you come from. Take, uh, for many years, President Buhari has always won in those big Northeast and not where it stays. Very big. Is it a surprise? It's not a surprise to me. What, what would you like to see in the next election? I, I, I think, let me tell you, I think we can do the election all in one day. Really? All the election in one day. There is nothing, it's not magic. When we went for the first day, they gave you three, they gave us three forms of it. Suppose they give us five. What's the difference between three and five? No, come along, come along. Don't let anybody deceive us. It's not a rocket science. You give me one paper now. So maybe I'll give me two. I've already two. Those I give you one today. Come back three weeks, come and take another one. No. <laughs> On one day, you can. Technology is there. We're still going to use technology to do this thing. It's to get, it's kept improving, improving, improving. There are certain people that are using talks, buying money, and go. That will fizzle out also. Listen. In the, in the early, in the, in, the 19, in the 18th century, in America, they were rigging election. If you come into our system, there is no stomach. We're going to improve it. Impro we must not lose faith in this system. Nigeria is a great nation. We will get there. When you returned from Russia yes. after your studies, you didn't come back alone, did you? No, I. Uh, if you are saying, I was. Uh, you ran into a certain woman that you. That's why right. I was saying I, I got engaged before I left. Tell, tell. Oh, you did. I got engaged. How did it happen? Well. Uh, you look too serious a man, you know, for even someone like me to think you'd have time for women at the no, time you were no, studying. No, no. We were, we were, we were students. Yeah. We were enjoying ourselves. We had really? a great time in Russia. Oh, yeah. Partying, doing everything. You have to make yourself happy. And then uh, most, of, most, most of the time we were with Russian girls. But suddenly, Nigerian girls start coming to Russia. So one time, one year, I was called by my very good friend, late now, uh, from from Kuala State, uh, Alaji Ibikazub, the son of Emma Filori. Um, he was the president of the student union. And he called me and said, look, Shegun, we have new Nigerian students coming in. We have to go and meet them. Uh -huh. So we have to go and meet them. I said, why be party this afternoon, this evening now? Where are they going? He said, no, no, Shegun, we have to cancel that. I'm going. I can't go alone. Come and support me. So I said, okay, okay. Okay, I'll come. Mitazi will wait for me. And I will come see them, and I will go. But when I go there, something has happened. Tell me about it. I can, uh, each time I, it was just, maybe that's how God does it in this world. While we were there, we saw some Nigerian, we saw the Nigerian uh, new students who have just come in. They were giving in their rooms in their hostel at the Moscow State, Moscow, no, Kiev State University. 
and they were there. So I just had one of the girls singing a song. The song, I'm a member of Shebun and Seraphim, that the church I go to. We have a song that says, if not on our side, has been the Lord of old, Psalm 125. And I had her humming this song. You know, in Russia, there's no, there is, it is no God. Nobody goes to church, nothing. And I said, ah, here yeah, in Russia, okay. <laughs> Somebody is thinking, if not on our side, has been the Lord of old. Ah. I said, I must find out who's singing this song. She, she didn't know. She didn't know. She has never met me before. She didn't know I remember she been laughing. And she was singing the song. Ah, I said, very good, very good. So my friend came and said, Chibun, please wait now. They have not eaten. You need to take them to the restaurant to go and eat. I said, you know what? I think I'll go with you. Oh, you changed your mind. I changed my mind. My I went and told the tattoo to go with the get a man go. <laughs> <laughs> and they were making just a force. They said, Oh, you've seen your sister. You've seen your sisters. So, yeah, I've seen her sister. So, I made sure, she didn't know, I made sure she was in my car. All the taxis. I made, she didn't know. I made sure she stood in my car. When we got to the restaurant, when we said, I made sure she was on my table. She didn't know. Then I now begged, I said, By the way, I now sang the song. She was singing it in English. I know the song in Europe, I didn't know it in English. So I sang in, in, in Yoruba to her. She sang back to me in English. I said, you remember she and Sulafim? She said, yes. Then I said, the father of Shebun and Sulafim is most familiar to Alashe, our father. I said, you know him? Of course, I didn't, you know, I didn't know him. He now told me everything. I said, wow, you have this book in, in, book in English? He said, yes. Can you please order for it for me? He said, I will, I will tell my uncle, who is the son of Apostle General Utubu, he will send it to her. That's how I met my wife. That's how we started. Very old-fashioned way of chasing women. Old-fashioned way, that's how we met. <laughs> I remember in January, we got engaged. Gee, and you have been together now for 40 years. Yeah, for 40 more. something years now, for more than 40 years. Excellent. So you got okay. married in the U.S. You know, it's very interesting. We met in Moscow. We got engaged in Moscow. Uh, we got married in the U.S. I think we made the first baby when we were in... Uh, in uh, in Belgium. You are about to be cast away on That's an right. island. That's right. And um, you I just go that. there on your own and you take along with you five items that are very important. Okay, take the along five. Well, the first thing I will take, definitely be my Bible. Once yeah. I have my Bible, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Anywhere, I take my Bible, I take my prayer gown. Mm -hmm. Go, you know, in Jerusalem, we are white without God, and so that will go with me with my staff. I said, I might take water and maybe take one fruit. Fruit? Fruit, one fruit. Really? Most likely, most likely. Not maybe a apple. bottle of whiskey? No, maybe, maybe apple. Are you not the drinking type? No, I don't, I really don't drink. You, I don't You drink. have never, I, never taken alcohol? Well, Champagne is an alcohol. national television. No, champagne is an alcohol. In Russia, they don't have Coke. They don't have anything. So you, you have, are... in Russia, you're taking enough to last you a lifetime? <laughs> no, no, no. What I'm saying is this. In Russia, the only, soft, the only thing that is easy to drink is champagne. The rest are vodka, cognac. Those, are, those will kill you. So the only thing you can take is champagne. <laughs> so I honestly have not taken alcohol, but since then I've not taken anything. Really? I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do any of this. No. They refer to you as a billionaire, Dr. Demore. Zero, I don't have any type of money, no. No, you, you are a billionaire, Dr. Demore. Is that right or wrong? No, 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 no. I don't have <laughs> People speculate, that's not true, that's not true. We, we, we thank God, you know what I will, let, let me say this. We thank God that uh, uh, our, our, our needs in life are not too much that it cannot be met. Can I ask you what is the most important need in your life? My standing with my God is more important to me now than anything else. After all the money. After everything we made now. <laughs> first, it's now we have to stick first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all other things shall be added. Really? That's, that's what that is. At this stage of mine now, no, that's the only thing. I looked at. If, the God, if God says, it's, it's today's the day, I just pray, give us the gate and enter to your kingdom. That's mine.
You're looking very fulfilled in life. You know? No, we thank God. Thank God. God has been good to us. Thank you very much for accepting thank to you be so on the chat, thank you so Dr. Demure. I'm so pleased to have you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank That's you. how it's been on the chat this week with a man whom I described earlier on as more knowledgeable about the airways than even the birds. I am Manny. See you next time. The chat is produced by Channels Television. You can watch it again online. Just visit our social media platforms, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook.